Series and sequences. Uh, series and sequences is a really fun topic. It's uh, much like integration. It's one of the kinds of topics that actually explains a lot of the results that you've already come to know uh, from earlier years, but we never really had um, the pieces to explain why they were the case. So as we go through this topic, we're going to be able to see uh, some really interesting, surprising results. Even though uh, the maths of it is very, very basic, uh, it, can be, it can yield some really interesting insights. So let's start off by defining a few things and introducing some terminology. Okay? Uh, what is a series or sequence? It's probably best to start with what's a set. We introduced sets uh, way back in year 8. And the idea of a set is it's just a collection of numbers, right? We usually indicate it <clears throat> uh, with a set of curly braces. So a collection of numbers. Such as, say, uh, the set of uh, whole numbers, right? Uh, or, you know, the set of counting numbers maybe is a bit easier example. So... Uh, there's a set of numbers, right? Um, it's, it's anything. It can be infinite, as this one is. That's what the dots indicate. Or it can be finite. It can be limited, just on a few numbers. For instance, I could say uh, the set of odd numbers under 10, right? So I could say 3, 5, 1, 7, 9. That would be the set of numbers. Now, really important for you to get that this set here uh, would be equal to, let's just forget about uh, the counting numbers for a second. This set here would be equal to this set. Uh, one, three. Namely, the order doesn't matter in a set, right? It's just that these five numbers, those five numbers, same deal. Okay, they're equivalent. Now, as we go from a set, a sequence adds order, right? And that's why we say things are sequential, right? And that means order matters, okay? So a sequence. You could call it an ordered set, right? Okay, so when you've got some order here, uh, we ditch the curly braces and we say, well, look, specifically, the order that I'm interested in, say, um, for the odd numbers, uh, I could have them in, say, decreasing order, right? So this order would be different, you know, that sequence, would be different to this sequence. Okay, because uh, here when I say which sequence is which, well, one's descending and one's ascending, right? And the sequential, uh, the sequence matters. Okay. So if that's what a sequence is, what's a series? A series is simply uh, adding them all up, right? So a series would be the sum of a sequence, right? The sum. So essentially. Instead of commas in between our terms here, uh, that's what we call each individual thing, each individual value, a term. Uh, instead of commas, I'm going to have plus signs, that's all. So, that would be a series right there, okay? Now, uh, sets, sequences, series. The next important thing that we need to get is, uh, how do we uh, talk about and describe uh, these kinds of uh, uh, sets of numbers? How do we describe them? Well, the first thing is that I've already mentioned, we call each individual number a term, right? A term. So this sequence here, well, these sequences, all have five terms in them. And to be able to distinguish between them, uh, we name each term. So for instance, this term would be term one, and term two, and term three, and so on. And uh, as a shorthand for that, we say a term, uh, like say term one, we would call it T1. Okay? So therefore term two would be T2 and so on. And if I wanted to describe a general term, say the nth term, where n's uh, you know, an integer, the nth term, we would call that T of n. That's how I'd read it. Okay? Now, that's how I can talk about each of the individual terms. How do I define the whole sequence or the entire, the whole series? Okay. Well, there are three ways. Uh, the first way, uh, you've already seen, actually, we, we've, we've shown it here. The first method is just to name enough of the terms uh, so that the pattern becomes obvious, right? So, name enough terms. 
to show a pattern. And I've actually, uh, that's what I've been doing so far. Okay, and uh, that doesn't mean you have to name all the terms, just enough of them. So suppose I didn't want just the, uh, the odd numbers under 10, suppose I wanted the odd numbers under 100. I might say 1, 3, 5, uh, 7, generally either 3 or 4 terms is enough. Then I could say dot 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 up to 97, 99. And that's enough. So the dot 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 indicates just all of the in-between terms. That's enough to show the pattern. That's the first simplest way, uh, but sometimes you, you don't have this kind of information. You have something a little more general. So here's our second method for describing a sequence or a series. And this is why this terminology is so important. You may have a general algebraic expression for the nth term. Okay, So a general algebraic expression. Okay, so let's consider a simpler example first. Uh, let's think about, say, the sequence of even numbers. The sequence of even numbers. So if I were to do it this way, naming enough terms to show a pattern, I'd just say uh, 2, 4, 6. Suppose I want all the even numbers, so I'm just going to go on forever here. Now, in this case, I can see, well, term 1 is 2, term 2 is 4, term 3 is 6. So what would the nth term be? Well, there's a really obvious pattern between n, the number of the term, and the term itself. The term itself is just double whatever uh, number of the term I'm up to, right? So in this case, I would say t of n, generally speaking, is equal to 2n. <clears throat> there's a general algebraic expression which defines every single term, okay? Uh, and you can modify that based on whatever kind of sequence you've got, um, or you can come up with all kinds of weird sequences. For instance, if I said n equals n squared, right? Uh, you'd have, well, the first term would be 1 squared, the second term would be 2 squared, the second term would be 3 squared, and so on. And we call, uh, we actually learned this uh, again in year 8, these are some of the figure numbers, right? These are the square numbers, obviously, that's why it's squared, right? Uh, so, you can have a general algebraic expression. Now, uh, this is just fine. Uh, there's one more way of defining each of our um, terms in our sequence or series, and that's what we call a recursive definition. What's well, a recursive definition? Uh, a rec recursion, recursion. Uh, it's a term that's familiar probably to anyone who's studied software design. It means something that refers to itself. Um, so, you know, like, like a recurring motif, right? Uh, that's, that's English. So, how does this work? Well, let's consider, say, uh, this term, this uh, series, sequence, sorry, the, uh, the sequence of even numbers, okay? Uh, the way a recursive definition starts, uh, works, is it tells you where to start. So, the first term in our sequence of even numbers <coughs> would be 2. And then comes the, the recursive part, um, the nth term which depends on the previous terms before it, right? So, as you can see, if I go to any term here, like say the third term, or the second term, or the fifteenth term, it's the previous term plus two. That's what makes it the EV numbers, right? So the third term is the second term plus two. And I guess that would make the fifteenth term the fourteenth term plus two. So if I want the nth term, the previous term would be the n minus one term. Okay. And to get to the next one, I add 2. So you see why it's called a recursive definition? The definition for one term depends on other terms. Okay. Now you might say, oh, this is a bit of an awkward way of defining a sequence. Um, you know, isn't this much simpler if, for instance, you wanted the uh, sequence of even numbers? Uh, that is probably true. It, is, it does look a little awkward. However, there are some sequences that you can only define this way. And in fact, one of the most famous sequences the Fibonacci sequence, which is that set of numbers which often turns up in nature. Um, the Fibonacci sequence, <coughs> you, it's very difficult, but it's po not impossible. Um, uh, it requires some imaginary numbers, actually. But uh, it's not very easy to define the Fibonacci sequence by the a general algebraic expression. T of n is equal to, equal to what? Okay, you can go look it up, it's quite interesting. It's much easier, though, and everyone learns it, 
by a recursive definition. So how does it work? Well, let's just write out in the first way how, how many patterns we need to get the pattern of the Fibonacci sequence. Well, the first two numbers are kind of arbitrary, right? We just decided to start at one. You can start at different numbers, actually, for, uh, and use the same rule. You get different sequences, like the Lucas numbers. That's another topic. Anyway, now that you've got two numbers, how do you get the next one? You add up the previous two. So that's why you get two, and then the previous two give you three, and then the previous two give you... 5, and then 8, and 13, and so on. Okay, now, uh, like I said, looking at that sequence, uh, a general algebraic expression doesn't pop out very easily. Uh, it's not like I can just multiply by certain numbers or just square or, or cube or whatever. How do we use a recursive definition? Well, again, I said, we start with these two terms. Right? We really could start anywhere we like, but since we're starting at 1 and 1, we say term 1, two, two, 1. Term 2 is also equal to 1. Now, I can say, not just the third term, but every term after that. Uh, sorry, term n. Right? What's it equal to? The previous two terms. So, the previous term is tr minus 1. And the term before that is t n minus 2. Okay. Now, so far for all of these, like say when we're talking about these n's here, right? What we're actually saying is that n is not just any number. Like you can't have the, uh, you know, the one and a half term or the pi, the pith term, right? Uh, we're, we're dealing with integers here, right? So we're actually specifying uh, not just integers but positive integers, right? Now here we're also talking about positive integers, but we're being even more specific. Uh, you know, n is part of the set of positive integers, but in addition to that, for this uh, recursive definition to work, uh, n can't have any value, just any values that fit this. It can't be 1, for instance, because then you're going to have the 0th term and the negative 1, negative 1st term, which we don't really have a definition for. The series doesn't go backwards past here. Okay? So we'd say that this term works uh, after 2. Right? So n has to be greater than 2. Okay? So uh, there's, there's three ways to define uh, a sequence or series. Just bash out a number of terms, get a general algebraic expression for each term individually, or use what's called a recursive definition. Start somewhere and then define a rule that tells you where to go from there.